I see many people in clinic who seek the help of a herbalist because they're exhausted. Sadly, many don't feel that they can talk to their employer about it. Whilst there are herbs that are very effective, lasting improvements come when we choose to work with our body and put foundational practices in place. These practices are fun and they're easy to implement. Often it's the fact that they are so simple that stops them from being used. The, oh, I must do that syndrome. Today I'm sharing three easy to implement foundational practices that can help you recover from exhaustion. And if they're used regularly, they will also reduce the likelihood of reaching that first stage of burnout. Let's get started, shall we? Well, hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the Project Joyful Podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Tutte, your medical herbalist and high performance coach. So hey, Project Joyful isn't just about being happy. It's about consciously creating a life you love. It's about remembering how to reconnect with your soul-centered joy. You know, that joy that comes from doing what you love, from living on purpose, and from being in a life that allows you to experience deep joy moment by moment. So hey, let's get started, shall we? So this one is close to the heart. Having personally experienced the consequences of not dealing with exhaustion, but also the sheer number of people I've seen in clinic where exhaustion is a huge factor. The most common request I'm seeing is, I'm really tired. Can you give me some herbs to boost my energy? I can, but that won't solve the underlying issue that's causing you to feel that way. Now, to be clear, exhaustion is very different from burnout, but if it's not addressed, it can lead to burnout. It can also show up as anxiety of the generalized kind, feeling edgy, fragile, low mood, and for the ladies, cycle irregularities. In traditional medicine, we like to refer to energy as being like a reservoir. It's something we have a natural level of, so akin to the river that flows into the catchment area, we do think and feel things that help us to build up that reservoir, just like the dam that collects water. And in trying times, or times where our outputs, whether they're physical, mental or emotional, exceed our inputs, we draw upon that reservoir of energy. And so the cycle begins again. Just like your bank account, make continuous withdrawals without counteracting deposits and eventually you'll find you have limited resources at your fingertips to respond to circumstances. That's exhaustion. There's two fundamental presuppositions to managing your exhausted state. First, you need awareness and secondly, you need responsive protocols. What do I mean by awareness? Many people are exhausted and they simply don't know it. Your body is a master at adapting. It's known as allostasis. Allostasis is all those micro adjustments your body makes to keep you functioning. So if you've been dealing with high levels of stress for a long time, it's highly possible that you'll think your exhausted state is normal. You'll say things like, it's just not who you are. You're operating from... Well, I've always felt like that. Think back to when you were seven or eight years old. How was your energy levels then? How does it compare to now? Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, it was different then. I didn't have the responsibilities, the demands, endless to-dos. Exactly. Remember those withdrawals? Allow me to invite you to take a moment. Take a deep calm, belly-filling breath with me. Now hold it and let that breath out. Do it again. Breathe in. Hold. Calmly release your breath. Now tell me, when was the last time you breathed all the way down into the bottom of your lungs. Do you instead shallow breathe? When we shallow breathe, we use the top of our lungs. Our shoulders rise up to our ears. 
Deep breathing recruits the diaphragm. Your tummy moves. Shallow breathing can make you feel anxious. Deep breathing can help you to feel at peace. Deep breathing is the first step to recovering from exhaustion. Set an alarm on your phone throughout your day to remind you to breathe deeply. There are herbs known as adaptogens that support your body in building its reservoir of energy. They're effective with traditional practice backed by emerging research. But the sustainable results come when your adaptogens are overlaid on foundational practices. The logical countermeasure for overextending, and that's what feeling exhausted is, overextending for too long a time, is underextending. I'm amazed at the resistance I encounter when I suggest this to patients. Our culture rewards doing, regardless of the consequences. Oh, I couldn't take a whole day and sit in my garden doing nothing. That would be lazy. I'm doing my yoga, the super bursty kind. A yin yoga class? Well, that feels like a waste of time. Why, I ask? Well, because you're not really moving and stretching. You're just kind of lying there. That, my friends, is the point. Doing nothing, and I mean truly doing nothing, whether that's a gentle stroll through the park, colouring in, sitting in the garden, putting your feet up with a good book. That's the work. If it feels uncomfortable, extra homework for you. Do more of it until it does feel comfortable. To recover, your parasympathetic nervous system needs to come to the fore. Your sympathetic nervous system needs to take a back seat. Your parasympathetic nervous system coordinates all the activities associated with resting and digesting. Two things we don't do enough of in the Western world. The sympathetic nervous system is the one that pumps you up, it gets you focused and gets things done. It's what drives your fight or flight response. It's important, but like any one-sided relationship, it's not sustainable. We need both. The other aspect to recovering from exhaustion is your active recovery. These can be things that feed your soul and are a little more paced, like weeding and digging in the garden, if that's your jam. It's the more active forms of yoga. It's watching TV that makes you laugh coffee with the girls or guys if you leave feeling elevated. When we have these three aspects, diaphragm breathing, relaxation and active recovery on the daily, you reduce the likelihood of getting to the point of seeing your herbalist because you're tired and you need an energy boost. That's called proactive health management. Practice energy awareness in the moment. Ask yourself, how am I feeling right now? And respond to that self-assessment. Do you need to build in a little bit more relaxation this weekend in response to a hectic week? How has your breathing been? Did you skip an active recovery session this week? Your body will notice when you focus more on working with him or her. You'll receive the signals and you'll be in a place where you can respond rather than react. Sending you lots of love. Bye for now. Hey, thanks for listening to today's podcast. Can I ask you a favour? If our conversation spoke to you today, could you please take a moment to leave a five-star review? Your review will help people discover this podcast and together we can create a world where there's even more love and more laughter. And if you want to hear more from the Project Joyful podcast, just click the subscribe button. Bye for now.